Welcome back, everyone. Live coverage here at the Cube in Las Vegas for VMware Explore 2023, our 13th year of the Cube coverage of VMware's conference, formerly VMworld. I didn't say it at all today, Rob. <laughs> Rob Stretch is my co-host. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest, Brad Parks, Cube alumni, good friend of the Cube, also the chief product officer, of Morpheus Data. Great solution. The timing of what we've talked about before in the Cube is now prime time. The inflection point of the hockey stick of multi-cloud as multiple environments come together in cloud native. Perfect tailwind for you and your business. Congratulations, great to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Timing is everything. Is there like a, a swear jar for like every time you say VMworld, you have to add a, a oh, thing? Or? I, no, I did it twice yesterday. It's muscle so. memory. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it will always be VM, VMworld to us. Right? Yeah. yeah, Yeah. we do so many interviews on theCUBE. It's on the intro, it's like, okay, we're live here at VMworld. Oh, damn, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, love the colors here. I got to say, VMware Explorers colors are popping. Great on the, on the photos. Uh, here the, uh, with the artwork. We got um, the blue shirt memo. Great, yeah. great stuff. Well, let's get into Morpheus. So yeah. a lot of action. Obviously multi-cloud's been percolating and sauteing around as an industry direction. Everyone's got multiple things. Yep. Um, they're not always working together at all. Um, and as customers realize that the clouds have their agenda yep. and everyone vendors have their agenda, that they have to kind of lean in a little bit. And that's something that we've observed and, and all the insiders have now seeing, seen it. But now everyone's trying to realize that, you know, to make stuff run, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> okay, but there's now new things coming to the table. This is something that you're involved in. Give us the update on Morpheus Data, where you guys are obviously on the floor, we went to your booth. What's going on with you guys? What's the current state of Morpheus? Yeah, we've, um, I mean, we've grown probably 40, 50% year over year over the last several years. And I think one of the, you know, one of the best things for our business has been the ever increasing complexity of IT. Like we're still trying to solve the same problem 25, 35 years later. But now, like IT was supposed to get simpler, you got VMware, Nutanix, Microsoft, you got Terraform, you got Ansible, you got OpenShift or Rancher. Like there's a poor platform operations, platform engineering person in the middle of the enterprise who's who's trying to string all that together. And that that's where we fit, and I think why we've we've had the success is. I joke sometimes our, our engineering co-founder is a people pleaser and just wants everyone to get along because yeah. like, there's a need for an abstraction and an integration point to take all those technologies and just help the customer move faster with less inefficiency. Exactly, the people pleaser is a good angle because that's actually the operational model. They got to work together yeah. and, and it's hard. What's the big problem that you're solving? Because again, there are a lot of blockers that are mostly either some sort of industry or some sort of infrastructure or product, are there blockers that you guys are taking away or what What has to happen next for the kind of the hockey stick inflection yeah. point for you know, multi-environment you know, environments to work, work and run? Yeah, oh, for sure. The, um, I haven't changed my shtick in a few years, but I think the, what's led to a lot of that growth is now enterprises are realizing that, all right, I've, I've done cloud-enabled technologies in my HCI and my integrated converged infrastructure. The real problem as IT is I need to enable the business. I need my developers, my product teams to move faster. I don't want IT to be a bottleneck. So enabling developer self-service is the core of our DNA. So we integrate all those technologies I mentioned yep. so that IT can deliver a, a unified API, a service portal, a Terraform provider. So dev gets what they want on demand while IT, finance, and security get to secretly put guardrails around everything and then everyone gets along. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting is, and I, I love the multi-cloud-ness of this <laughs> explore. Uh, I almost said it, yeah. um, now that it's in my head. But <laughs> when I look at multi-cloud, I, I now have asked some of the people from VMware about this, is that, that it, it, they, when they mean multi-cloud, they mean AVS, VMC, sure. and things of that VMware nature. VMware on X. Yeah, and, and which, which is right. fair, very fair. And I think it's a good control plane from their perspective of ESX and vSphere being everywhere. But one of the things that I think is interesting is, and one of the hard parts is networking and bringing it all together and all the different pieces that go, you know, hey, I have ALB and ELBs in addition to having a VM running SQL or something of that that I've brought up into VMC for that matter. Is that what you're seeing is that customers are really looking for you to have their apps are spanning, not just, or not contained only in VMC, they're also using the AWS components as well. Absolutely, and I mean, and where our wheelhouse is that 
Fortune 2000, big, messy, heterogeneous enterprise, and even kind of not just individual apps. I like talking to people who have forest problems. I often use the analogy like leaves, trees, and forests, right? There'll be a product team who has an affinity for VMware, they love it, that, that's where that workload needs to run. That same company will do an acquisition and that's a Google company. Or there's a product group that's big fans of AWS, but when it comes to that provisioning experience, the governance, cost management, that's a forest problem. You shouldn't be doing that differently across every environment. So let, let those teams use the tools they want, but don't reinvent the wheel or try and skill everybody up on everything. There's a need for that, that abstraction layer. And that, that's really, I think, what has led to that is that's how we reduce complexity. And the, the consequence of not doing to what yeah. your model and keeping the old way is slow, slow. takes people's time, but you got to chase after everything. Oh. Someone has to like make sure rules of engagement or things are in line. You're constantly chasing. You've got to chase it and then skills gaps. We were all joking, we all have kids in college. I'm just going to tell my daughter, like, go be an automation engineer who knows VMware and AWS and you'll, you'll print money. Because there just aren't enough smart people who get that platform engineering automation. And so you know, yeah. being an abstraction, we're like, hey, do one API, one control point, and we'll handle all the inter interdependencies. Brad, I want to ask you something. We've been riffing on theCUBE on this yeah. topic and I think you're perfect to kind of contribute to it. We were saying the following, developers, open source, you see KubeCon, CNCF, we love the, the momentum in cloud native. The developers pretty much have become the de facto body with their choice. You yeah. see selections of code, someone says, hey, I got a better product. Well, if they don't adopt it, then the world is voted. The collective intelligence of developers sure. weighed in and people figure it out, okay, it's a better product based on my crowd and not just friends. So check, That's, love that. Now the platform engineering world is booming. Rob and I have been observing and talking about since KubeCon publicly, like this group is kind of the SRE, got rid of that SRE word, okay, okay that's Google, site reliable, what does that mean? But platform engineers kind of become that job, hardcore, engineer, infrastructure, play together, I got a lot of stuff, abstractions coming, they seem to be the folks that are going to be looking at this hard. And our, our thesis is that this group of people will be the fa de facto standards bodies. What they like oh, yeah. will probably decide who gets to be in that role, managing that abstraction, because it's so important. What's your, your reaction to that? Do you have a comment? Is that true? Are we just overthinking it? What's, yes. your, what's your vision? I mean, the, if developers can to make sure it's at the coding level, there might be an opportunity with open source and open conversations to, what's your, what's your take? It's, I mean, that's actually how we came to be. We were created by a team of 25 of the top 1% developers on the planet who had one IT guy to go modernize applications at dozens of companies. They were doing platform engineering and platform operations before it was cool. We productized that and became a company. That role, if I fast forward seven years, now there's a head of platform whose job it is to enable those development teams. But there aren't enough talented people to hand carve CICD pipelines and yeah. build that. So that platform layer, you're spot on. That's the new IT, right? I mean, we love our storage yeah. guys, yeah. VMware people, but- It's IT. Solving yeah. that platform problem. Cloud is IT. Yeah. That's cloud and platform. Yes, yeah, yes, Rob, this is exactly yes. what you're saying at KubeCon. What's your take on it? Yeah, I, th I think that's exactly the right way to think about it is that platform engineering has subsumed a lot of those other roles. And I, I think it's, and I think you kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it really is an ecosystem. I mean, you guys have a lot of partners. I mean, I, I've seen the little wheels that you have out there with all the different logos. My fidget spinner, that's what uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I've even been one of those when I was at Zerto. We, yeah, yeah. we, we did integration with you guys, or you actually did the integration with us. And so you do it with a lot of different pieces around there. How, how does that go over from your ecosystem and then what are you seeing from like the VMware ecosystem as you're here, you know? Yeah, I think one of the big pieces, we talk about IT being complex and platform being the center of all these, trying to grab all these vines. And so whether it's, you know, us plus VMware or us plus Terraform or Ansible or ServiceNow, our job is to, to help be that self-leveling cement for that platform team, bring everybody into the party 
So you can automate the handoffs and just eliminate the technical debt, which means yeah. you have to have an ecosystem. So we've actually spent the last year and a half building a, a plug-in framework that lets people play together. And now we've got, we've got Oracle, we've got Nutanix, we've got Cohesity, we've got people doing their own Morpheus plugins. And it's, it's, it's truly what separates a, a tool from a platform. So you, we are you, you, need, you have to have a successful ecosystem. Oh, absolutely. To be a platform without ecosystem is Doesn't not a platform. For sure. Okay, so let's, let's take it one step further. How do you guys, because you brought up Ansible automation, that's yeah. awesome. What's the risk for platforms when you see moves like HashiCorp yeah. uh, with their license change in the middle <laughs> of the game, uh, which I think is disingenuous in, in nature in my opinion. Um, making a, that's like making a rule change in sports. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fourth inning, we're going to play yeah. polo. <laughs> wait. Like, like, what, wait a minute, wrong game. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, I mean, they did it weird. I, I didn't like how they did that, just for the record. Um, but people do change licenses. Sure. Are you impacted by that? Yeah, we, um, we can take that concept of abstraction technically and also apply that to your vendor relationships or anything else, I think. And, and technically... Did you guys have a relationship with Terraform? Um, yeah, we, we actually have a lot of companies who use us as their front end for some Terraform because you need to spin up a VPC or a network or something else, but you also need to run an Ansible playbook and push a CI record into ServiceNow. So we, we fill those gaps. And so for Terraform specifically, we can were you tie in into the provider. We weren't impacted. Oh, you were not impacted yeah. by the license. We, okay. don't, we don't manage it. We don't embed it. We don't require it. We just make it better and we do all the things that it doesn't do yeah. by tying the pieces together. So we want to be that platform hub that bring us your Terraform, bring us your Ansible, bring us your VMware. So you're still we'll, using the free version um, of Terraform? We don't use it. Customer, oh, let's, let's customer, pick an okay, example. Got it, customer okay. installs it, they're running it. You go into your Morpheus settings, you're like, yep, there's where I'm at. Here's my Git repo. You need us to automate running that and then spinning up a VM and doing the life cycle management of that application, Got it. that's where we come in. So you're not impacted because you're not even working with the customers are. Yeah, Your we tool. love it. Okay. We have our own provider. There's a rich provider ecosystem. The IP in, in that is, is the providers. I mean, the core, uh, it's, it's not that many lines of code. I mean, it's great, it's fantastic, but the provider ecosystem is where a lot of the work and the value is, so we want to use it. And now that VMware's got this chapter closing, um, with the original, I call the, the original VMware. Yeah. I mean, historic company. I call them the Mount Rushmore of tech oh, industries. There. Virtualization impact is going well documented. It's Jensen phenomenal. on stage, really hat tip to, you know, a little gesture, kind of a hat tip to Ragu, which is a personal kind of a nice vibe. But now you get the Broadcom era coming yes. in, which we're expecting. We announced yesterday in the queue, we think it's going to be a $5 billion cut um, coming, and they're going to stave three and give two back um, <laughs> to the ecosystem. So nice math there in favor of Broadcom, yeah. but that's they're they're shrewd, they're business, they're very sure. clear. They're not, look, Broadcom has been very clear about what they're going to do. Some people chose not to listen to it, but they've done everything they said they're going to do. EBITDA numbers, Dave Vellante tracks us down. I to the love team. his analysis. It's Dave fantastic. Dave nailed this from day one, but Broadcom hasn't changed anything. He said we're going to buy VMware, we're going to make it efficient, yep. get the numbers in line with how we do business, which means they have to perform. Yep. Gonna, I, I think you'll see them amp up their business units and they're going to go all in. Oh, for sure. How does that impact the ecosystem and you specifically? Do you have a it's, vision um, on that? Yeah, we, we've all seen Jerry Maguire, right? Great movie. Like, yeah. our little company had a very big day. Like, was one of his quotes. Yeah, like, yeah. when, when Broadcom made that announcement, it was a very big day for us. Like, we love VMware. I have nearly a million VMs under management. We've won Best of VMworld at this show twice. We have deep, deep integration with VMware. But the amount of... CIOs, heads of procurement who've come to us and said, hey, I remember we talked to you a year ago. Are you, remind me, you can help us blueprint and provision into VMware today and you love it. It might be KVM tomorrow and it might be cloud native AWS the next day. Like, is that, is that what you do? Like, that's what we do. So I think it is an ecosystem play. All the boats are going to rise. Broadcom's yeah. going to continue to be a powerful force in the industry, but the, again, it just shines a light on the need for an abstraction layer and something that can pull the pieces together. That's a, I want to ask that on the customer question, if you don't mind, because this yeah. comes up a lot in our conversation on our, our analyst review around relevance. Yeah. VMware was the most relevant brand for many, many years, and you know, when you look at the cloud spend, we have data that shows that in some cases in the big accounts, 
you know, Amazon's getting $100 for every dollar VMware gets. Wow. Which means, that's not an extreme example, those are yeah. numbers we, we, we heard from direct from customers. In some cases it might be different. But what it means is the attention and the enthusiasm is not on VMware. It's on cloud, that's where the spend is. But VMware's got to get back in the game. Yeah. They are still relevant, but they're at the risk of mind share relevance. What, what can they do with their partners to bring that back? I think, I mean, one of the things VMware did fantastic for many years was develop and maintain the ecosystem, right? You'd go to a VMUG or you'd go to hands-on labs and it was all about everybody working together. I mean, I, I really truly love VMware. A lot of our friends are there. If, if Broadcom doesn't keep the ecosystem going, I think they're going to have a challenge because, again, yeah, like we started, IT's complex. We all have to play together and, and we can all solve customer problems yeah. if we do that right. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think, again, they have to undo, and I think VMware has started to do some of it, undo what happened during the EMC and Dell years where it became a more insular, closed system. I mean, I, I, we were briefly talking about how I even had examples where I was building hands-on labs, we built a hands-on lab, and then we were told, oh, we're not having partners in the hands-on lab. And this year, I mean, right now, they literally have five partners, and it's just the hyperscalers. So I, I think, again, I, I look at the same way that if Broadcom doesn't really embrace the ecosystem, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, I've said on the Cube publicly here on this show and before, and Dave and I were riffing when he asked me about what I think Broadcom's going to do. If they're motivated by numbers, which they are, and, and I think they're going to be true to the brand. They're going to give people some chance to run. I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think. There'll be some cuts, trim the fat, whatever you want to call it in business. But when you look at the numbers, they have to get results. Results are license renewals. Yep. Right? So when you look at license renewals, so you got to look at how many licenses are out there. Yep. They got vSphere, they got the, sure. the core products. But if, if they have shelfware out there, not installed, you can't charge a yep. license for something that's not installed. And the customer could say, you know what? We're not going to renew that anymore. It's yeah. like a domain name when I don't, I don't use it right. anymore. I'm not going to renew that. that for a while. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. You know, I don't let that go. They got to get their stuff in. I would be focused 100% of my energy on getting my partners engaged in Absolutely. more stuff. And then you go back, then you can renew the license, and then the pricing strategy comes in. But initially, more surface area of, of pricing options, yeah. the more I, renewals you get. I think one, one of the things we hear from a lot of customers is, man, there's, there's so much stuff in my ELA, right? And I pay for it and I got my value, but I don't use it all and, and I had a I chat with a big SI earlier, and I said, well, free isn't free, just because it's in your ELA. If it takes an army of services people and a bunch of work and you're not really using it, is it a thing? It's Schrodinger's license model, I guess. If, if does it exist? So for us, we want to help pull the pieces together, get sticky, provide value to customers so that they can get back to the business of innovation and getting those developers doing what they yeah. do. Brad Parks, Chief Product of Morpheus Data here in theCUBE. Great to have you on. Thanks for taking the time to riff with us and share the story. For the last minute that we have, yeah. give a plug for the company. What are you working on? Are you hiring? What's the pitch? Give a plug for Morpheus, for the folks watching. Yeah, so again, we're that platform, and kind of three lanes I see evolving for us. We work with all the infrastructure providers, right? The Dells and the Lenovo's and the HPE's, and we help make their stuff better. We work with the services companies, the Accentures, the Deloitte's, the others, and then we work with the adjacent software companies. So keep an eye on kind of the middle of all those paths coming together. All right, Brad Parks here in theCUBE, always bringing the A game. Of course, day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. A lot more, we got two sets. Dave Vellante is on the other set. I'm here with Rob Stretch, I'm John Furrier. Stay with us for more after this short break.